Welcome to part two of dot structures and molecular geometry. In this one, we're going to look at the full array of possibilities of molecular geometry. Uh, so we're going to make a table to do this. So if you're taking notes in here, um, you might want to give yourself a little bit of space. Uh, so the first thing we're going to consider is how many electron regions a molecule has. Next, we'll consider the number of atoms bonded. Then we need to uh, identify the shape of the molecule. And I'll draw that out as part of this. And then over here we need to look at an example of a molecule that would have that shape. Okay. Um, all right, um, we're not going to deal with uh, some of the more complex electron region amounts. It does go higher than we're going to show here, but we're going to keep it pretty simple. Um, let's say that we have four regions of electrons and we have four atoms bonded to it. That means we have something uh, like we saw in part one, CH4, that's methane, where we have a central atom and we have these four electronic regions spreading out from each other as much as possible. The bond angle between them is going to be 109.5 degrees approximately. And then this pyramid shape here um, has a name, and that name is tetrahedral. Okay, so it's four regions of electrons and four atoms bonded. Um, and methane is a good example of that. So let's say that we have four electron regions and three atoms bonded. Um, a good example of this would be something like ammonia. Um, I think, well, it might be a good idea to sketch these things out so you can see the different electron regions here. So if we sketch out methane here, um, you can see one, two, three, four electron regions, and then the uh, one, two, three, four atoms bonded. And so that's where we get, you know, these numbers. Um, for ammonia, if we sketch this out, we're going to get something like this. All right, so we have the one, two, three, four regions of elect four regions of electrons, and we have one, two, three atoms bonded. So uh, we the electrons still have a tetrahedral shape. You know that's where they press against each other. They f they repel each other. Um, but we only have three atoms bonded, and so we get kind of like this tripod shape to our molecule. Uh, this. You know, you could draw it a few different ways. I'm going to draw it like a tripod, just for, well, because it matches my description. Okay, and so we lost that top part of it. Um, the bond angles are going to be close to 109.5 degrees. It'd actually be a little um, less, but I'm not going to get into that. The name of this is trigonal pyramidal. And that's what it's called. It's like a pyramid. Um, that's what it is. All right, let's keep going. If we have uh, something with, like, uh, let's do water. So we saw this in part one as well. Uh, water, if we draw this, we've got an oxygen, two hydrogens, and we've got electrons and electrons. So the regions of electrons. We have one, two for the bonds, and then three, four for the non-bonding pairs of electrons. So that's four regions of electrons. And in this example, we have one, two atoms bonded. 
So it's like losing one more leg of this tripod if we think about those electron regions are still repelling each other and so maybe we'll lose the, the back leg this time. So you have this sort of bent shape molecule and again um, about 109.5 degrees, it'd actually be a little less than 109.5 degrees. The geometry of this is just described simply as bent. All right, um, let's keep going. Uh, you, you need at least three atoms to have a bond angle or in geometry, and so we don't ever go beyond, uh, you know, go be low two here because we have like one, two, three to make an angle. So just keep that in mind. All right, uh, let's look at formaldehyde as an example. So formaldehyde, if we draw that out, uh, we get a C double bonded to an L. We have an H, we have an H. Um, and then we have two non-bonding pairs of electrons. Now, um, the only place that we'll look at the geometry is the central atom. So around the central atom is what we're thinking about, and carbon is our central atom here. And so let's count up our regions of electrons. So we know this is one, this is two. Now maybe new to our discussion is that double or triple bonds count as a single region of electrons when you're looking at geometry. So this is just one region of electrons. So keep that in mind again that a double or triple bond counts as a single region of electrons. So in this example, we actually just have three regions of electrons. How many atoms bonded? Well, see around the carbon, we have one, two, three. So we have three electron regions and we have three atoms bonded. Because we only have three regions of electrons, they can spread themselves out a little further than in the tetrahedral arrangement. And uh, so we end up with a flat molecule. So, and all of these, uh, you know, atoms lying in the same plane. The bond angle uh, is going to be 120 degrees between these, um, you know, bonds of these atoms. The name of this shape is trigonal. Again, we saw that trigonal up here. Uh, this is trigonal, but it's not a pyramid this time. It's flat, and so the word we use is planar. So trigonal planar. Three electron regions, three atoms bonded, trigonal planar. All right, we get into a case where we don't have a lot of atoms that fit this next one, but uh, we'll make something up. Um, let's see if we have like, trying to think here, if we had like, um, no, let's see, like, oh, no, and we'll make something up. Oh, let's see, I don't know if this is a real thing or not, but we'll just pretend. So if we have some, a molecule like this, we would end up with an N double bonded to an O, and then also bonded to a chlorine. And we'd have non-bonding pair here, two non-bonding pairs here, and three non-bonding pairs over here. That's an L, by the way. Cursive. Makes it chlorine. Uh, okay, so we'll use this example. Um, all right, we have one, two, three um, electron regions around the central atom. And we have two atoms bonded to it. So with three electron regions and two atoms bonded, it's like we're gonna knock out one of these bonds here. And so we end up with something like this. And it's gonna be a little less than 100 degrees, but it's okay. And for some reason, we're gonna confusingly give it, you know, 
the same name as another thing. It's going to be bent. And you can see that bent shape to it, so that's why it retains that. All right, we got one more. So um, our last example is a case where um, we might have, well, you can see where this is going to go, where we're going to have two regions of electrons and two atoms bonded. Uh, the classic example of this is CO2. So we've got a carbon double bonded to an O. There we go. And maybe you can see them. We've got double bonds, and so a double bond counts as a single region of electrons. So we've got two regions of electrons, and we've got our two atoms bonded to the central atom. If we're going to have these two regions spreading out, you know, repelling each other as much as possible, um, perhaps you can see how it's fairly intuitive that we're going to end up with them as far away from each other as possible. And so our bond angle is 180 degrees. Uh, the shape of this, the geometry is linear. And uh, that is it. That's what you need to know for molecular geometry.